how's it going guys all right so in the last video we were cleaning up the dashboard and um, we um, um, set up or se separated all the all the stuff that we're gonna need into separate components so um, I'm not gonna lie I did test this offline uh, uh, before recording uh, just to see because I know I have a tendency of misspelling things and then uh, I know some of you probably saw some of my spelling mistakes in the previous video so um, I had an error here where I said add accounts there was an S here so I removed it um, so I removed it because that's how I named the file here the other one was the transact form folder uh, this folder over here so <laughs> it didn't find any of these files over here simply because I made a spelling mistake there I'm pretty sure you guys saw that too but in any case, uh, let's just, that's the only thing that I changed, the naming of the folder and the um, accounts and so forth, all right? So, but everything else seems to be fine. So if there's any other issues, we will see. So now let's test and see uh, our authentication process, all right? So while the server is running, I'm just gonna pause the video. We will test our applications once uh, it's back up. All right, guys, the server is now up, so let's come back here. All right, so that's our application. So first thing I want to again test and see if I put in the wrong password. It's still doing the right thing. All right, so it says here uh, incorrect username and password. If I use an account that doesn't exist, right, click there. Okay, it still gives the error that we set up initially. So let's go back. So now let's try and log in with the correct credentials. Which is password, one, two, three. And then we log in. Okay, so looks like our authentication is now working. Um, as you can see, uh, this is what I was referring to. So if you remember in the previous video, it was displaying both the the buttons for I mean both um, where is it um, it was showing the accounts um, uh, display along with the no accounts display which consisted of the accordion where we're going to list our accounts along with um, along with um, what you call it um, the um, um, what you call it the no this component that's currently showing here so now because we did that particular check here to show that um, Remember, within the app controller, it checks to see if this user has any accounts. If it doesn't, um, if it doesn't, that's what we're checking here. Um, it doesn't display this component. It then now displays this one here where it says we need to now add an account. And if you click there, our off canvas is working. So as if 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 we um, if we uh, we still have to check the the transact one, but for this one currently it is working, meaning that it is picking up our JS files over here, uh, the bootstrap or bundle JS file. And um, uh, this one, obviously, we will have to first create and add an account. And then once the account is added, uh, what it's going to do is um, it's then going to display the accordion or the accounts display, which has the accordion plus the the, the two buttons for uh, creating, for, for transacting and so forth. All right. so. I think so far we've got everything we need. The only thing now is to just display the name here. So let's actually do that now to show that our application is pulling um, from the session. All right, so let's close the server. Then we're gonna come back here within the dashboard. So remember it's sitting within the header, right? So we can come into the includes folder and then go into the header. And then here, where is it, where is it? Okay, here is where we will display our name. So I'll say, uh, remember it's user dot first name, right? And then the other one is going to be user dot last name. Now these properties that we're accessing here, right? as you can see, um, when we log in, we are creating the session. Uh, we are storing a user object as a session uh, in the session scope, right? So the properties we're accessing are actually 
uh, these properties over here, the first name and the last name. So when you access them, you have to use these ones here, right? So make sure you do that. All right. And then the other one is um, you can also create a logout function, right? So what we can do um, in the, what is it? Is it the auth controller? Yeah. So in here, we can just create a simple get mapping. Right. Right. So we say public. Um, what is it? String. And then we say log out. Okay. And then in here, all we have to do is say. Um, I think we can say HTTP session. And then say session. And in here, all we have to do is say session. Uh, dot invalidate. Right. The other thing we can add in here is redirect. Um, redirect. Is it redirect? Um, I think it's redirect attributes. And then redirect. Okay. So here, let's say return. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say redirect. Right. Uh, sorry. And say that and then we can say login okay now here we can set up the um, redirects and then we're gonna say dot add flash attribute right so we say logged uh, logged out right um, then here we can set the message and say logged Okay, so remember, if you've worked with JSPs and servlets, the redirect um, functionality, um, you don't, it's not the same as when you do the, how can I put this, the, um, um, where is it, when you use the um, forward, the forwarding uh, directive, because the forwarding directive, you can add um, certain information and then into an object, the same way we're doing here with the modeling attribute and all of that, and then access them as in within the request scope. But with redirect, you don't have that option um, within um, within Java server pages or with servlets. But in Spring Boot, there is this particular functionality that you can use because the redirect functionality actually creates a new, uh, what you call it, um, request all the time. So all the stuff, if you had a, uh, a, sort, a certain um, object that you set up, you would lose that the moment you refresh the page. So with this, at least we can do flash messaging, and then um, but as soon as you refresh the page, it's gone. So it's not the same as when you add the 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 um, the is the same as when you use the model in view, uh, of and adding objects in the request scope and all of that, right? So. Yeah, so this will display on the logout page. So let's do that. Um, let's go to the login. I mean, sorry, the login page, not logout. All right. So we can do that. We can copy this and then paste it over here. All right. That's it over there. And then uh, what else do we need? Um, in the header. Oh, we need to create that route. Uh, where is it? Auth controller. So we create it. Say log, log out. All right. So it's gonna hit this. It's gonna destroy the session, and then redirect us back to the, to the login page. Okay. So now, what do we need? Um, I think we can go to the login right, and then say. Um, let's copy this and paste it there um, along with this all right so this is showing danger so let's say info and then also info so when they click on the logout button it's going to redirect them here and then if there is um, that value available it will show that okay so yeah 
okay we got the name now let's 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 add this here so we're going to say log uh log out right sign out yeah okay i think that's fine so let's deploy the app again um let's pause the video for the time being and then um we'll test again once it's back up all right guys the server is up so far no errors within the console so okay we have to log in again so let's go to the login page all right so let's log in again with our user account i'm gonna say um let me just check okay when we log in okay so as you can see there at the top we are accessing the name of the user all right and then here is where we're gonna click to log out so we are now able to access all the info of this particular user um, when they've logged in um, um, using this uh, session object here all right so had that had had we done any issue have, had we had any issues here it wasn't going to display the name it just was going to give an error Right, so now let's test test out our login and our flash me, uh, flash message there. So let's say sign out. So as you can see, our, our flash message is now showing. It says logged out successfully. Right, and when we click there, it's gone. So we won't get it again. So yeah, if you wanted to use flash messaging within the application as well, you can use uh, where is that? You can use this particular directive here. Um, to flash messages uh, depending on whatever action the user is and then as you can see we were able to redirect to the login page with no issues all right so but if we let me see when we go to the dashboard it's going to give an error because it can't find that attribute if you check um where is it app controller so as you can see it can't find this due to the fact that this session object hasn't been initiated. So that is why it's giving that error. All right, so, but and, and another thing, don't uh, don't worry about this. We will use, um, imp we will implement some security where we can block a user from trying to access the dashboard without logging in and so forth. So for now, at least we know that our authentication is working. Um, it is setting a user session within the scope. And so everything that we've set up so far is fine. So now the only thing I think in the next video what we can work on is creating an account so that it can display the components. So within the next video we will create an account controller and um, um, yeah we can create an account controller and then create um, a, a method within here where we can um, create an account for the user. All right um, I think yeah that's pretty much it for the video. Um, Again, guys, for those of you who haven't done so already, if you like what you've seen, uh, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And uh, I'll see you within the next video. All right, cheers for now.